commence primary ignition. Welcome to Unlimited Power. My name is D-Rod, and here's my guide to playing Rey at your Shadows of the Galaxies pre-release for Star Wars Unlimited, the trading card game. Now, if this is one of your first times watching uh, one of my guides, I always want to start off by saying the goal here is to focus on some of the commons and uncommons cards within the set that can really um, fill out your deck and aid your leader based on their abilities and their colors. Yes, there are going to be some rares and legendaries that are standout cards with this um, specific leader and colors, but your chances of getting those out of six packs in your pre-release box can be very slim. So we want to focus on the cards that are easily obtainable to help you, like I said, fill out your deck a bit. Let's begin by looking at Ray as a leader and a leader unit and see what she brings to the table. As a leader... Ray has an action that you can exhaust her and pay one. Very important. We're going to have to pay attention to the one resource here to give an experience token to a unit with two or less power. Okay. So as long as the unit has two or less power, you can put an experience token and raise it up to three. Once the unit has more power than that, you'll have to stop. Power is going to be, um, can vary based on upgrades and abilities. So be mindful of the cards and their printed cost and any abilities that may change the cards, uh, power going forward. Cards like grit may change certain things about the cards power, or once you equip a card with a certain upgrade, it may change it, making it immune from Ray. So it's important to kind of use this action first before you do anything else with the card. So keeping one open when you deploy a card will be very helpful. If you're uh, play Luke from the first set, you'll be very familiar with this type of play style. Now, as an epic action, you can deploy Rey when you have six or more resources. This means she can come into play as early as turn five. She's a 2-6 unit. So as a 2-6, you can definitely use her ability um, that we can see here that says on attack, you can give an experience token to a unit with two or less power, and you can raise her to a 3-6, or sorry, 3-7. Three, three, so once you do raise her experience, this is when you can start equipping her with other cards or putting other types of experience tokens on her. She also has the Restore 3 ability, which is going to be really strong for a unit that comes out on turn 5. You can be aggressive with a unit like Ray. You can swing, swing, swing with all your units to the base and deploy Ray and have Ray kind of restore your health back. Here's some of the cards within the aspect I'm going to recommend that you try out with Ray. The first one's going to be Clan Ren Rescuer. So a lot of cards in the hero set are going to be um, Mandalorian. So Clan Ren Rescuer is definitely one of those. It's a 1-2 Mandalorian Trooper. You can put this out and upgrade it with Ray, which will be good. And when you play it, you can give an experience token to a unit. So if you play this on turn one, you can go ahead and give it to yourself if you want and make the Clan Rescuer 2-3 or put it on some other unit and then upgrade the Rescuer with Ray. Next is Concord Dawn Interceptors, a three cost unit that's a one four. A one four means you can use Ray's ability twice on it before it is um, no longer a target. The great thing about this card is it's Sentinel, so your opponents are definitely going to feel the damage from the Dawn Interceptors, and when he gets a plus two when it's defending. So imagine bumping this up to three uh, six, and then when your opponents attack it, it's actually a five six. Very dangerous. Last in these colors is the Village Protectors. Another common card in this set it is a 2-2 with Sentinel and Shield. So not only does it have the Sentinel ability, it can protect itself with that shield. And you can finally take this character art that has three, three people on it and give it three power. I think that'll be really strong. In the command aspect, we're going to look at cards like Outflank. Outflank's a great one that we've seen in named Rebel Assault or in Leia's ability from Spark Rebellion. We know that Outflank is really good with aggressive decks because it allows you to attack with units before your opponent can respond and trade into them. So I think using Outflank either early or late game is going to be really great to give you the advantage and get more damage onto your opponent's base. Modded Cohorts is another good one. You can see all these cards are fitting within Ray because it's a 2-4, meaning you can upgrade this with Ray to a 3-5. It has Ambush and Ray 2, meaning after Ray's ability, you can actually make this a 5-5, which I think is or, um, really when it attacks. Next is another Mandalorian Trooper called Sundari Peacekeeper. A 3-cost 1-5 unit, you can use Ray's ability twice here. Bring it all the way up to a 3-7, has raid 2, meaning it can attack for 5 after those upgrades, and can restore 2. 
Restore is going to be really key here. And there's a lot of blue white restore in this uh, set. So make sure you're using the restore mechanics where you can. The cutting aspect won't fit Ray very well, but let's look at some cards I think can, that can uh, go well with her. The first one's going to be a reprint from Spark of Rebellion called Surprise Strike. For two, you can go ahead and bump the attack of one of your units for plus three, and they can attack immediately into a base or another unit. This is a great one to use against the base because that plus three can easily give six to seven points of damage onto opponent's base, depending on who you choose. And again, you're keeping that pressure and tempo up with your units. With Ray being a uh, easy character to deploy, you um, unless you get like a big bomb uh, that's a rare or legendary, you can really focus on low cost units in events like this. Cartel turn Turncoat definitely fits that. It's a two, three, one drop that you can use Ray's ability on the first turn you play it. Um, so I think that's going to be beneficial. And then L337 from the solo movie is a two drop, two, two. That says, when played, you may rescue to capture card, and if you don't, give a shield token to this unit. So it can kind of protect itself, or you can smuggle it away and eventually rescue a captured card if you know your opponent is playing some captured abilities. In the aggression aspect, we're going to recommend a few more Mandalorians. Ketsu Ono is going to be that. She is actually above the... Um, Threshold for Ray as a 3 2 with Saboteur, but her value is super strong. She's a low cost unit that comes out uh, with two resources, and when they deal combat damage to a base, you may de defeat an upgrade that costs two or less. These upgrades can be experience tokens, shield tokens, and any other printed cards that meet that value. Housecast Soldier, however, does fit Ray's um, criteria, has Saboteur as well, and it's a 2-3 Mandalorian Trooper, so a good one to just kind of get around all those Sentinel units and continue to put pressure on your opponent's base. And lastly is Detention Block Rescue for the Aggression Aspect. A 3-cost event that deals 3 damage to a unit, and if the unit happens to be guarding any captured cards, it's 6 damage instead. This type of card can really um, do a lot of work for you, and at a common slot, hopefully you can see at least 2 of these in your set. Speaking of common events, the best one in the game so far is definitely Rivals Fall, a 6-cost event that is, has the ability to defeat any unit in play, whether it's space, ground, or a leader. This card is going to be great and definitely one you're going to hope to have one or two of, especially because you are playing blue. Um, it'll be a great one to add. The next one is Follower of the Follower of the Way. Follower of the Way is really good because it's a one three card that costs two, and once you use Ray's ability on it, it immediately gets a plus one plus one upgrade itself. So it kind of puts itself up uh, quicker. So one upgrade token makes it a two four, but because it's upgraded, it immediately becomes a three five. So it's no longer an active card you can use with Ray, but it immediately jumps um, an extra power. And last for Vigilance is Moisture Farmer, a 0 4 one cost unit. This is a great one to put out turn one because it has Restore 2, and you can use Ray's abilities twice on here to bring it up to a 1 5 and then a 2 6. This is going to be a tough one for your opponents to deal with with that type of uh, health. So definitely recommend throwing a couple of these in your deck um, because it's going to force your opponents to deal with them because that Restore mechanic is definitely going to be a pain. In the hero aspect, let's look at Wookiee Warrior, a two cost unit with uh, or four cost unit with that's a two five with grit. This is a unit you want to use Ray's ability on before it takes damage. By putting the ability on it first, it becomes a three six because as soon as it takes damage, that grit is going to raise how much damage it does. Um, it's going to raise its power and it will be immune or won't be a target for uh, Ray's ability. So important to put Ray's ability on it first before it takes any damage. And if you happen to control another Wookiee, draw, draw a card. Next is going to be Gray Squadron Y Wing. I think this card's going to be amazing. I love cards like this. It's a two drop space unit. That's a one three, so you can uh, bump it up twice there. And on attack, you force the opponent to either choose a unit or base, and they have to deal two damage to that unit they control. Love cards like this because it throws your opponent off their game a little bit, makes them do the mental math, and just puts them on tilt. Next is going to be a Mandalorian with that's Protector of the Throne. It's a three cost, two, four, and when it's upgraded, it gains Sentinel. So when you play this card, if once you use Ray's ability on it, you'll upgrade the unit with a experience token upgrade, and then it has Sentinel and is a three, four. So I think this is a good one. 
And in the non-aspect cards, we're going to recommend a rich reward, which also allows you to put uh, experience tokens on up to two units. Every, um, it's for one upgrade that you put on your opponent's unit, and it gives them a zero zero bonus. So it's kind of a good one to kind of keep making cards like Ray stronger. Pretty much you want to put this on cards that have already passed um, their three costs or sorry, their three power that there are no longer targets for Ray for just kind of keep building on these units. One card's going to help you do that is the Mandalorian Warrior. It's a three cost unit that's a three three, and you may give an experience token to another Mandalorian unit. Again, play this on one that is no longer a target for Ray. And next is the Twin Pod Cloud Car. Would love this one with Ray. It's a three cost two two unit with Restore two. There's one thing we've seen in a lot of these colors, and it's Restore. So if you can keep up with that Restore uh, mechanic, then you should be able to do a lot of damage to your opponent's base, avoiding their units while healing your own base. It's just a race at this point. Very aggressive. So this is my guide to playing Ray at a pre-release. I hope you're excited for it. I know I'm excited to try her out um, in limited and constructed formats. Let me know how it goes at your local pre-release or sealed event in the comments below. What rares and legendaries did you get that worked well for, for Ray? And were any of these cards um, really ones that you had fun playing? Thanks a lot for watching. Best of luck and may the force be with you.